Today we're going to be learning about area of trapezoids. The star chart tells us that the area of a trapezoid is equal to one half the height times base one plus base two. So that's what this means here, base one, base two. And you can see it here, base one, base two. Those are two different lengths. Our height, again, is a perpendicular line from one base to the other that creates a, a 90 degree angle. Um, so remember, our base and heights make a right, and then it's one half of it. And you saw that one half with the triangle. And it works the same way with this trapezoid. And so I'm going to doodle over here for a minute, and I'm going to try and draw this trapezoid again. All right, not perfect, but you get the idea. If we take that trapezoid and duplicate it and flip it, we have created a parallelogram. And so when we do that, up here is base two, and down here is base one. So just like with the area of a rectangle and parallelogram, we multiply the base times the height, but here we have to add these two together. And then that's why we get an average and we divide it in half because we only need half of that shape. So it looks very complicated, but it does go in the same way that we've been doing the other shape. It's just instead of having one base, we will now have two. So when we do this, we need to remember that multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. Sometimes you'll see this um, written Instead of multiplying by one half being divided by two, that is an equivalent statement. It's just that usually multiplication is is the default. Um, trapezoid characteris characteristics are that they have one set of parallel lines. So if they had two sets, they would be a parallelogram. Um, if they were 90 degree angles, they would be a rectangular square. So this one set of parallel lines means that if I were to extend these two out, um, they would never meet. So this is one set of parallel lines. That means there has to be two of them, like a pair of shoes has two shoes, all right? So let's get working with this. All right, so we have a figure that we're being asked to determine the area for it. And we have four different numbers on it. So the first thing I like to find is my height because I know that my base and my height will always make a right. So there I find that my height is three centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. They make a right. That means that it's a perpendicular line. It will be to both bases. And so then I know that my base one and my base two are my two and four centimeters. So when I go to label it, I can put base one, two centimeters, base two, four centimeters. And I'm gonna ask you, does it really matter which one is base one and base two, or do you just need to add the two numbers together? Um, if it was four and then two, would that still give you the same sum? So think about that. And then our area is what we're solving for. That's my question mark. So what is this five centimeters here? That is extra information. They want to confuse you and make you think that's the height. But since it's at an angle, it's not creating a 90 degree turn. So then I'm going to write my formula. Area equals base one plus base two times height. Or that height could go in front. Not a big deal. So then I start substituting in what I know. I know that the one half is going to stay there. My base one and my base two is two plus four. And then my height is three centimeters. So I tried to do those in the colors that they were in so you could see where they would get to. So PEMDAS tells me the first thing I have to do is take care of the two plus four. So I know that two plus four would give me six and then I have to multiply it by three. So again, when we get to this point, you could go ahead and take one half of the six and then multiply it by three. I like to do the whole numbers together when I have them. Um, that's my preference, that doesn't have to be yours. Six times three would be 18, 
And then I have 1 half times 18, which I can rewrite as 18 divided by 2, and that will give me 9 centimeters squared as the area of this trapezoid. All right, let's do another one. Here we have a trapezoid. It's kind of spun around from what we're used to, but I know I need to look for a base 1. I need to look for a base 2. I need to look for a height, and I need to know what I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for this perpendicular line right here. There's no measurement with it, but I can see right there that I have the same one. That creates a 90 degree angle with my two bases, so my height is 6 yards. My base 1 and my base 2 create that perpendicular angle with me. So 1 is going to be 6 and 1 is going to be 8. I'm looking for my height and that is extra information for this problem. So let's write our formula. All right, so now I substitute in what I know. I know that I have one half of the following. I have one half of six, and then I have to add my two bases together, six plus eight. So let's go ahead and do that six plus eight, because PEMDAS tells me I have to solve what is in parentheses first. So I have one half of six, and 6 plus 8 is 14. Okay, well just for grins, I'm going to do this in a different order today. I'm going to look at it and I'm going to take 1 half of 6. So that, it could, what's 1 half of 6? Half of 6 is 3 times 14. And so we get 3 times 14 and when we multiply that out, we will get 42. And that would be yards squared for the area of my trapezoid. Now, if I would have done it this way, I would have had um, 1 half of 6 times 14. 6 times 14 will give me 84. And I need 1 half of 84, which, remember, is the same thing as 84 divided by 2 which will give me 42 yards squared for my area. Did we get the same thing? Yep. So sometimes, you know, um, some people might want to do the 1 half of the 14 to get that down to 7 times 2. Um, you can choose because that commutative property tells me I can arrange my multipliers, my factors that I'm multiplying in any way I want. All right, here they asked me to find the area of a trapezoid again. And so one of the easier things to do is to pull out this height, because you can see that it creates this perpendicular line there. And so sometimes I like to start with the height. The height in this case is 0.8. The base one and the base two are these two parallel lines. Remember, they'll never touch, and the height is the perpendicular line to them. So we can label base 1 as 0.9 and base 2 as 0.4 or 4 tenths. And what we're searching for is the area of this shape. So by now you should know the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the formula. So the area of a trapezoid, the formula for it, is 1 half the height times base 1 plus base 2. So we substitute in what we know. My height is 0.8. My base 1 is 0.9, and I'm going to add to it 0.4. So the first thing I need to do is do this part right here. So I'm going to come over here, and when we add decimals, we do need to remember to keep them in alignment. So when we get that, we would get 13, and my decimal just tracks down. So I can replace that whole thing with 1.3. Now let me go ahead and fill in the rest of it. So now I'm going to do the multiplication of these two. 
And when we multiply our decimals, we need to remember that um, the decimals do not have to be in alignment. In this case, they are, but we're just going to ignore them anyway. And let me write my 8 a little bit better. There. So 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 1 plus 2 would give me 10. And I have two numbers behind decimals. So I would substitute that to be 1 half times 1.04. So now I can remember that I need half of this. And so if I want, I can either write it as 1.04 divided by 2, or I can do half of it. It really just depends on the way your brain works. So, and everyone is different. 1.04. I can't get any groups of 2 out of that, but I can get 5 out of here. And then I can get 2 out of there. So the area of this trapezoid is 0.52 or 52 hundredths meter squared for the area of this trapezoid.